Let us now take the first model from the topic of probability where we shall discuss questions related to tossing of coins. Let's have a look at the first example. When two coins are tossed simultaneously, what is the probability that both the coins show heads as the output? So here as you can see, two coins are tossed simultaneously and we need to find out what would be the probability that both the coins show heads as the output. We very well understand that when one coin is tossed, there are two possible outcomes. It is either a head or a tail. So the sample space for tossing a single coin is head comma tail. But here two coins are tossed simultaneously. So let us first decide what is the sample space for such an event. Now here the sample space can be taken as follows. The first coin may show up a head and the second coin can show tails. So that's one possible sample point. Then the second possibility here is first coin may show a tail and the second coin shows head. The third one is first coin can show head and the second coin as well shows up a head. And the fourth possibility is both the coins can show tails. So these are the four possible outputs or four possible outcomes when two coins are tossed simultaneously. First can show head, second can show tail or first coin can show up a tails, second coin can show up heads, both the coins can show up heads or both the coins can show up tails. There is no other possible outcome apart from these four outcomes. Now here we need to find out the probability that both the coins show heads as the output. So we have to find out the probability of both the coins showing up heads. That is nothing but both have to be heads. Now we know that probability of a particular event E is the number of outcomes which are in favor of that event divided by total number of outcomes. Now from the sample space, the number of outcomes which shows both heads is only 1. So we can say that the number of outcomes in favor is 1 divided by total number of outcomes here is 4. So we can say that N of S should be equal to 4. So the probability that both the coins show up heads is equal to 1 by 4. So this is how we can solve questions based on tossing of coins. We first need to decide what is the sample space and then we can take up those outcomes which are in favor of the given event divided by total number of outcomes to get the required probability. Likewise, let's say what is the probability that both the coins show tails. Now again we see that oh, there is only one outcome in which both the coins can show up tails out of total 4. So the answer here should be taken as 1 by 4. Suppose we have to find out the probability of one head and one tail. That means one coin has to show up head and the other coin has to show up tails. So what is the probability that this event can happen? Now from this sample space, we find that one coin showing head and the other coin showing tails can be happening in two possible ways. Either the first one can show up heads, second one can show up tails or the first one will give tails and the second one will give us heads. So these are the two favorable outcomes out of total four outcomes. So the probability of one coin as head and the other coin showing up as tails will be equal to 2 by 4. But because there are two outcomes which are in favor of this event divided by total four outcomes. Remember we cannot take these two outcomes as the favorable outcomes. Why? Right? Because here we find both heads and both tails. But the question says we want one head and one tail. So these are not the favorable outcomes. Whereas the first two are favorable. So 2 out of total 4 which can be taken as 1 by 2. Likewise, what is the probability that both the coins show the same output? Probability that both shows same output. Both outputs are same. Let's take this. Both outputs are same. That means either both the coins should show heads or both the coins should show tails. Now, how will we get the answer in this case? Now here, to get the answer, we need to find out those possible outcomes in which both the outputs are same. Now, out of these four outcomes, we find that there are two ways in which both the coins share the, show the same output, both heads or both tails. In the first two cases, we find that one is head, the other is tail. So these two cannot be taken as favorable. Now these two become the favorable outcomes. So again, the answer here is two out of total four. Why? Because there are, these are the two possible outcomes which are in favor of the given event out of total four. So two by four is again one by two. So this is how various questions from probability can be answered based on tossing of coins. We simply have to decide what is the sample space and then take up only those outcomes which are in favor of the given event divided by total number of outcomes to get the required probability. Before we take up the next example, let me add one very important point here. That is about what will be the total number of outcomes in the sample space. As you can see here, for such an event, the sample space has got four possible outcomes. So how should we calculate the number of outcomes in the given sample space? 
We know that when we toss one coin, there are two outcomes. It can be a head or a tail. Now, when there are two coins, there should be two power two outcomes. Why? Because first coin can show two outputs and the second coin can also show two outputs. So, when we combine them together or both the coins are tossed together, we will get two into two, four outputs. And those four outputs are as shown here. Likewise, let's say we are tossing three coins. In that case, the number of outcomes will be equal to 2 into 2 into 2. That is 2 power 3 or it can be taken as 8. So this is how we decide the total number of outcomes for a given event. Let us now take the second example from model 1 which is based on tossing of 3 coins simultaneously. Let's look at the question first. When 3 coins are tossed simultaneously, what is the probability that 2 coins show tails as the output? So here we are tossing three coins simultaneously and we need to find out the probability such that out of these three coins, two coins show up tails as the output. Now when two coins have to show tails as the output, it is pretty obvious that the third coin has to be a heads. Now to solve this question, we first have to see what is the sample space. That is all the possible outcomes when three coins are tossed simultaneously. Now the sample space here will be as follows. We can have all three as heads or all three can be tails or we can have a combination of two heads with one tail and again this can be arranged in three different ways. The first two can be heads and the third one can be a tails or we can have a head tail head or tail heads and heads and we can have the other outcomes as one heads and two tails. So the first coin can show up heads and the remaining two will show tails and again these can be arranged in three different ways. One is head tail tail or otherwise tail heads tail or tail sales and heads. So these are the possible outcomes when three coins are tossed simultaneously. We see that there are total eight outcomes here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. All three can be heads, all three can be tails. Any two of them can be heads and the third one can be tails. So first two heads, third one tail or first and last heads, second one tail or second and third heads and the first one can be tail. Likewise, we can have one heads and two tails combination in three possible ways. Now here, we are supposed to find out the probability that two coins should show tails as the output. So our desired event is that out of these three coins, two must show tails and one coin has to show up heads. We know that the probability of an event is taken as number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. Now the total number of outcomes here are eight and we only have to decide what are the number of favorable outcomes. Now favorable outcomes should have two tails and one head. Why? Because we are looking for two coins showing up tails. Now out of these eight possibilities, we can have two tails in this three cases. That is first coin showing up heads, remaining two are tails or first and last are tails, second one is heads or the first and second are tails and the third one is head. And the remaining cases here are not favorable for the given event. Why? Because we want two tails and one head. So out of total 8 cases, we find that there are 3 possible outcomes which are in favor. So the probability here can be taken as 3 out of 8. So that is the answer for this question. But friends, as you can observe here, unlike the previous example, taking the complete sample space and then finding out the favorable outcomes becomes a lengthy task. Why? Because we have got 3 coins here. And 3 coins as we know will result in total 8 outcomes. Why? Because 2 power 3 should give us the total number of outputs. So that is 2 power 3 is 8. So we will have total 8 possible outcomes. Now taking all those 8 outcomes in the sample space and then checking the favorable ones is a very tedious task. So let us see how can we get the answer without actually taking the sample space. Now we very well understand that probability of any event is nothing but number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes as we have taken in the previous case. Now without worrying about the complete sample space here, we know that the total number of outcomes when three coins are tossed simultaneously should be taken as 2 power 3. Why? Because each coin will give us two outcomes. So when there are three coins tossed together, the number of outcomes will be 2 into 2 into 2, that is 2 power 3. Now the only concern here is what will be the number of outcomes which are in favor of the given event. That is two tails and one head. We know that total we have got three coins. Now here we have to select two coins out of these total three coins which can show tails. So that is nothing but selection of two coins out of total three coins. That can be done in 3C2 ways. But because once we select two coins which have to show tails, it is obvious that the third coin will be showing up heads. So it is simply 3C2 divided by 2 power 3. And 3C2 is nothing but 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 2 
1 factorial into 2 factorial and this whole divided by 2 power 3. So this can be simplified as 3 factorial is 6 by 2 whole divided by 8. So that is nothing but 3 by 8. So that's how we can directly get the answer without taking the complete sample space. We only have to select 2 coins out of the total 3 coins which can show tails. So that is simply selection of 2 out of 3. In a similar manner, the probability that only one coin shows a tail can be asked. So here you can see that we need only one tail and remaining two have to be heads. So that is nothing but selection of one coin out of the given three coins which can give a tail divided by total number of outcomes. So there the answer can be taken as 3C1 divided by 2Q. Why? Because we need only one coin which can show a tail. 3C1 is equal to 3 divided by 2Q is 8. So again we see that the answer is 3 by 8. And this can be justified by looking at the sample space. As you know, we need only one tail. And one tail here is these three cases. Here we have only one tail and remaining two are heads. Whereas in all the other cases, we find more than one tail. So that is the reason the answer is 3 by 8. Similarly, the question may say, what is the probability that all the three coins have to show heads? Now here, all the three coins have to show heads. That means we need to select three coins out of total three coins. So there it can be taken as 3C3 divided by 2 power 3. Remember the total number of outcomes always remains same. Whatever be the event, total number of outcomes or total number of outputs is always 2 power 3. Only the numerator changes based on the given event. So since we need 3 heads, we can take it as selection of 3 coins out of all the 3 coins. That is nothing but 3C3. And 3C3 as we know is equal to 1. Whenever R is equal to N, NCR should be equal to 1. So 1 divided by 8. So the probability that all the 3 are heads or let's say all the 3 are tails can be taken as 1 by 8. And this again can be justified from the sample space. As you can see out of all the 8 outcomes we have only one outcome where all 3 can be heads. Whereas remaining all have less than 3 heads. So 1 out of 8 will be the answer. Likewise for 3 tails again 1 out of 8 will be the answer.